Hello my scholars, you are welcome to my school channel and my name is Frank. In this lesson video, we are going to be answering Jab CBT past question for biology year 2023. Please stay with us, do not go anywhere and we'll be right back. Welcome back to my school channel. In this video, we are going to be answering questions 61 to 78. So let's begin with question 61. Which of the following statements is true regarding sexual reproduction in organisms? A. It involves the, the fusion of garment from two parents, resulting in offspring with genetic variation. B. It involves the production of offspring through a single parent, resulting in genetically identical offspring. C. It is a form of asexual reproduction where all strings are produced without the involvement of gametes. D. It does not involve the formation of gametes or the fusion of reproductive cells. Okay, so this question is about the statement okay, that is true regarding sexual reproduction in organisms. Okay, so the statement that is true regarding sexual reproduction in organisms is option A. It involves the fusion of gametes from two parents, resulting in offspring with genetic variation. Okay, and we know that we define a sexual reproduction as the production of haploid gametes. Okay, so this haploid gamete fuses during uh, fertilization to form a genetically diverse offspring. Okay, so that makes option A the correct option. Question 62. Which of the following is a method of asexual reproduction in plants? A. Pollination. We know that pollination is the chance of pulling green from the anther to the stigma of a flower. So A is not the correct option here. Why B. We have vegetative propagation. Okay. C. We have seed dispersal. So seed dispersal has to do with um, the movement of seed from one place to another. Okay. And we know that there are some agents okay, that brings about uh, seed dispersal like man, like animals, like wind, like water. They will also have the explosive mechanism. Okay, then we know that uh, fertilization is the fusion of garments, okay, to form a zygote. Okay, so the answer to this question is option B, vegetative propagation. So vegetative propagation is a method of asexual reproduction in plants, okay, and it involves the production of a new plant, okay, from vegetative structures such as stem, leaves, root okay without the involvement of seed or spore okay and this allows plants to produce a genetically identical offspring okay to the parent plant so that makes option b the correct option question 63 which of the following plant tissues is responsible for transporting water and nutrients from the roots to the rest of the plant so option a we have mesophyll b we have xylem c we have epidermis and d we have phlegm Okay, so what phlegm does is actually the reverse of the answer to this question, which is option B, xylem, okay? So, uh, phlegm actually carries resources, okay, like protein, like glucose, okay, from the leaf to the rest part of the plant, okay? While option C here is epidermis, epidermis is the upper layer of the human skin, okay? Why xylem, which is the answer, okay, is actually the plant tissue that is responsible for transporting water and nutrients from the root to the rest of the plant okay so that makes option b the correct option question 64 which of the following statements best describes courtship behaviors in animal a courtship behaviors are solely performed by males to establish dominance within a social group b courtship behaviors involve displays and rituals performed by both male and females to attract a mate c courtship behaviors are primarily performed by females to attract males for mating. Why D, courtship behaviors, aggressive interactions between males competing for a female mate. So the answer to this question is option B. Okay, courtship behavior involves displays and rituals performed by both male and females to attract a mate. Okay, so courtship behavior in animals plays uh, crucial roles okay, in mate selection and reproductive successes in many animal species. It involves a series of dance rituals, vocalization, and display, okay, or other behaviors which serves to communicate sexual receptivity, readiness, and attractiveness, okay, so that makes option B the correct option. Question 65, 
which of the following best describe physiological variation in biology? So A, variation in the physiological processes and functions of organism B, differences in physical characteristics and appearance within a population C, differences in behavior and social interactions among individuals D, variations in the genetic makeup of individuals within a species. So in biology, we define physiological variation as the variation in the physiological processes and function of an organism. So physiological variation encompasses uh, internal processes and function of an organism, including metabolic processes, hormone regulation, um, immune responses, cellular function, and physiological adaptation. Okay, so that makes option A the correct option. Variation in the physiological processes and functions of organisms. Question 66. Which of the following options correctly identify excretory organs in animals? So A, we have stomach, intestines, and bladder. B, we have lungs, kidneys, and skin. C, we have brain, spinal cord, and nerves. D, we have heart, liver, and spleen. Okay, so the options that correctly identify excretory organ in animal is option B. Okay, we have the lungs, we have the kidneys, and we have the skin. So the lungs plays an important role in excretion by eliminating carbon dioxide, which is a waste product of cellular respiration. Okay, true exhalation or breathing out okay then we also have the kidneys so the kidneys are the major excretory organs in humans and they are responsible for filtering the blood and removing waste product of metabolism okay waste product of uh, waste product of metabolism excess water and dissolved solute okay in form of urine then we also have the skin primarily the skin is a protective organ okay but they also participate or it also participate in excretion sweating through sweat gland helps to regulate body temperature and eliminate small amount of metabolic waste such as urea and salt okay so that makes option b the correct option question 67 which of the following best describe the concept of trophic levels in a functioning ecosystem a the levels of ecological interactions within an ecosystem b the levels of energy flow within an ecosystem c the levels of nutrients cycling within an ecosystem d the levels of biological diversity within an ecosystem okay so trophic level in a functioning ecosystem refers to the level of energy flow within the ecosystem okay so the answer to this question is option d the level of energy flow within an ecosystem so your trophic level actually represents the hierarchical structure of feeding relationship which each level representing the different position on the food chain okay so that makes option b the correct answer do you know that you can take practice question with our jam simulated cbt pass question all you need to do is to click on the link in the description below and this will take you to my school website there you have to download my school mobile app for your android devices and my school software for your laptops and computers please go ahead and start practicing moving on to question 68 which of the following statements best describes pollination in plants a pollination is the process of transferring pollen from the stigma to the anther of a flower b pollination is the process of transferring pollen from the anther to the stigma of a flower c pollination is the process of releasing pollen into the air for dispersal d pollination is the process of seed formation within a flower so in biology we define pollination as the transfer of pollen grain from the anther you know, the anther there represent the male reproductive organ of a flower to the stigma okay the stigma is the female reproductive organ of a flower so we define pollination as the transfer of pollen okay from the anther to the stigma of a flower okay it should be noted also that pollen grain can be self or cross okay when it's self that means it's within a particular plant but when it's cross that means it's between two plants okay so option b correctly defines pollen grain okay so option b becomes the correct answer i believe you are enjoying this video content if yes please do not forget to hit the like button click on the subscribe button and lastly tap on the notification bell to get informed as soon as we release the next videos question 69 which of the following best describes a natural 
habitats in ecology. A, an area of organisms naturally lives and interacts with the surrounding. B, a human-created environment for wildlife conservation. C, a controlled laboratory setting for ecological experiment. D, a protected area for endangered species. So a natural habitat in ecology is defined as an area where an organism lives naturally and interacts with its environment or okay, with its surrounding. Okay, so we know that a natural environment encompasses ecological condition, physical features and resources which support their survival and interaction within their environment. Okay, so that makes option A the correct option, an area where organisms naturally live and interact with their surroundings. Question 70. Which of the following statements about viruses is true? A. Viruses can reproduce outside of a host cell. B. Viruses require a host cell to replicate. C. Viruses possesses a cellular structure. D. Viruses are living organisms. Okay, so the best answer to this question is option B. Viruses require a host cell to replicate. Okay, the, the, the reason for that is because viruses are parasitic. Okay, since they are parasitic and when they want to replicate, they need a host cell to replicate and they do so by injecting their genetic material into the host cell and use this cell's mechanism to replicate. Okay, so that makes option B the correct option. Viruses require a host cell to replicate. Question 71. Which of the following statements is true regarding cell growth? A. Cell growth is solely influenced by standard factors. B. Cell growth is a continuous process throughout the life of a cell. C. Cell growth involves an increase in the number of organelles within a cell. Why D. Cell growth occurs by cell division. So the correct answer to this question is option D. Cell growth occurs by cell division. So cell growth, as we know, simply refers to increase in cell size or mass okay, over time. Okay, and cell growth occurs um, by cell division. So cells undergo division in order to increase their number and contribute to overall growth in tissues and organisms. Okay, so that makes option D the correct option. Uh, cell growth occurs by cell division. Question 72. Which of the following statements is true regarding the urinary tubules in the excretory system? A. The urinary tubule is responsible for the production of urine. B. The urinary tubule regulates the water and electrolyte balance in the body. C. The urinary tubules connects the kidneys to the bladder. The urinary tubule is the site of filtration of blood. So the answer to this question is option A. Okay, we know that the urinary tubule is a part of the nephron in the kidney. Okay, responsible for the production of urine. Okay, so the urinary tubule does this or produce urine by reabsorbing useful substances okay, from the filtrate such as glucose and ion okay, and excreting waste products into it. The modified filtrate, now called urine, is then passed onto the bladder for storage and subsequent elimination. Okay, so that makes option A the correct option. The urinary tubule is responsible for the production of urine. Question 73. What is the primary function of the liver in the human body? A. Regulation of body temperature. B. Regulation of blood pressure. C. Production of hormones. D. Detoxification and metabolism of nutrients and drugs. So we know that uh, the liver is a vital organ in humans with multiple functions. But its primary function is the detoxification and metabolism of nutrients and drugs. The liver plays a vital role in various metabolic processes. It detoxifies harmful substances such as drugs and toxins by breaking them down into less harmful substances that can be eliminated from the body. Okay, so that makes option D the correct option. Detoxification and metabolism of nutrients and drugs. Question 74. Ecological secession refers to A. The movement of organisms from one habitat to another B. The competition among species for limited resources C. The process of natural selection in a population D. The gradual and predictable change in a community over time So ecological secession can be primary or secondary It is secondary when it occurs in an area where no previous community has existed such as on a bare rock or after volcanic eruption 
okay, it is secondary when it exists or when it occurs in a place where a previous community has been disturbed, such as after a forest fire or human disturbance. Throughout the succession processes, the community gradually changes in terms of species composition, population sizes, and community interaction, leading to a more stable and matured ecosystem. Okay, so that makes option D the correct option, the gradual and predictable change in a community over time. Question 75. Which of the following options best describes adaptation for survival in organisms? A. Adaptation is the inherited trait that increases an organism's chances of survival and reproduction in its environment. B. Adaptation is the process by which organisms acquire new characteristics during their lifetime. C. Adaptation refers to the ability of an organism to change its environment to better suit its needs. D. Adaptation involves the development of new traits in response to changes in the environment. Okay, so the best option here that describes adaptation for survival is option A, which is the inherited traits that increases an organism's chances of survival and reproduction in its environment. So option A is the correct option. Do you have any question? Please feel free to ask your question by clicking on the link in the description below. And this will take you to my school website. There you can ask all your questions and solution will be provided within a short period of time. Moving on to question 76. Digestive enzymes are responsible for A. Breaking down food into smaller molecules B. Absorbing nutrients into the bloodstream C. Regulating the pH of the digestive tract D. Transporting food through the digestive system So digestive enzymes, they play significant role in the process of digestion Okay, by helping uh, in breaking down food into smaller molecules that can be easily absorbed and utilized by the body. Digestive enzymes are produced by various organs in the digestive system, such as the salivary gland, the stomach, the pancreas, and the intestines. Okay, so that makes option A the correct answer to this question, breaking down food into smaller molecules. Do you have better explanation or steps to these questions? If yes, go to the comment section below and comment the question number and the solution you wish to share. Question 77. Which of the following is a major difference between plant and animal cells? A. Plant cells have a nucleus, while animal cells do not. B. Plant cells have a mem cell membrane, while animal cells have a cell wall. C. Plant cells contain chloroplasts for photosynthesis, while animal cells do not. D. Plant cells have a central vacuum, while animal cells have multiple small vacuum. One of the major differences between plant and animal cell is that plant cells contain chloroplasts for photosynthesis, while animal cells do not. However, plant cells contain chloroplasts, which are organelles for photosynthesis, enabling plants to convert sunlight into energy-rich molecules. Now, plant cells do not contain chloroplasts. So they obtain their own energy through other means, such as consuming organic matter. Okay, so that makes option C the correct option. Plants contain chloroplasts for photosynthesis, while animal cells do not contain chloroplasts. Question 78. Which of the following structures in the ear is responsible for transmitting sound vibration to the auditory nerves? A. Eardrum. B. Ossicles. C cochlea d auditory canal so the answer to this question is cochlea so cochlea is a spiral shaped structure in the inner ear filled with fluid and lined with cells with very fine hair these hairs move when the fluid in the cochlea moves thereby converting sound vibration into nerve signals that the brain can interpret okay why option a and option b which are eardrums and ossicles what they simply do is that they transmit a uh, sound vibration into the cochlea but it's the cochlea that actually converts it into nerve signals that the brain can interpret so the correct option is option c i believe you are enjoying this video content if yes please do not forget to hit the like button Click on the subscribe button and lastly tap on the notification bell to get informed as soon as we release the next video.